Mary, help us enter into this holy mass as if it were our first mass, our last mass, and our only mass. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Protodamos in pacis, in nomine Christi. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends, we gather on this Monday of the fifth week of Lent. As we draw near to Holy Week, we enter into Passion Tide. We continue to turn our hearts even more toward the mystery of Jesus' cross, of his suffering, of the suffering that he endures with and for us, out of love for us, offering us the hope of new life, the hope of the resurrection. So brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Um, let us pray. O oh God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often, because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, to whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon, from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her entry every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders who had hidden, had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. 
Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her, as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the, wo the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold, because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O oh, eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer as she was being led to execution. God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel. and He cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, what is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate those two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord said, Although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now, then, if you were a witness, tell me, under what tree you saw them together? Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head. For the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree you surprised them together? Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Bless in God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to, to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. 
There was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to him, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go. From now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Monday of the fifth week of Lent uh, is a powerful week, a powerful day of, of long <laughs> scripture readings, um, but incredibly packed with meaning, incredibly packed with truth incredibly packed with evidence of the word of God, of the mercy of God, with understanding about how sin works, as we see in particular with, uh, with the wicked elders and, and the story of Susanna, and it describes how they had, says they suppressed their consciences. They were so overcome with desire and were fixated upon what they were lusting after, right? And I mean both what and who, right? Because she was the victim of their lust, right? But their desire was fixed not even on, not on her as a person, 
but in her mind, they had reduced her to an object and they were fixated upon the satisfaction of their desires to the point that they were going to use her, a person with dignity made in the image and likeness of God to satisfy their desires to the point of cruelty and violence. It's a horrible scene. It's a horrible scene. But it shows then how they were so fixated upon that selfishness and that selfish desire that it says they suppressed their consciences and they would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. Maybe we um, can't identify with and are rightly appalled Hopefully we all are rightly appalled by the sin of the wicked elders. And maybe we can't identify with that type of sin personally. But we are all sinners. And if we're all honest, we can identify with a situation in which we have at some point in our lives become fixated upon a desire to satisfy our desire, whether to get back at this person, whether to lust, whether to... Uh, given to anger, whether to disregard our prayer, whether to steal, whatever it may be, that we suppress our consciences, would not allow our eyes to look at, would not keep in mind just judgments. We're all sinners. And in one way or another, we've all been there. Maybe our situation feels less dramatic. But the reality is, is that we might also identify with Susanna, particularly if we have ever been falsely accused of something, of anything, particularly those who tragically have suffered some kind of sexual assault. The Lord looks on all of us with great mercy and compassion and has such healing in store for each and every one of us. There's, there's great tragedy <laughs> in this first reading. There's so much to be said. There's more than can be said. And yet at the same time, it's important to us, it's important for us to reflect upon the correlation between the first reading and the second. The gospel in which our Lord, in a manner similar to Daniel, who his spirit is stirred up by the spirit of God. And he says, I will have no part in the death of this, of this woman. And he stands up and he intervenes. And, it's, and it ends, thus was innocent blood spared that day. Powerful words. Powerful words. The story of Christ, the roles are flipped. Now, it's important to realize that both women are being treated unjustly, right? When the woman caught in adultery, when her accusers drag her before Christ, you know, and they say, we caught her in the very act of adultery. And a logical person might say, well, where were you and what were you doing that you caught her in this act? Just as the, the wicked elders in, in, their, in their fabricated story that they made up to accuse Susanna, they apparently hoped no one would bother to ask them what they were doing hiding in the garden. Because even their fabricated story accusing Susanna begins with them hiding in the garden. And so in both cases, there is a wickedness at work in the hearts of the accusers. In the first case, Susanna is clearly innocent. In the second case, the woman caught in adultery is presumably guilty. I think that's implied by the Lord telling her, go and from now on do not sin anymore. But nonetheless, Christ, like Daniel, but in a greater way, particularly because she is guilty, stands in the breach with that spirit of Daniel that stood up and said, I will have no part in the death of this woman. And he stands in the breach. And he 
spares her. He refuses to condemn her. He refuses to in any way endorse or support her condemnation. And he spares her life. Of course, we know the full story. We know how it is that Christ is able to show mercy to sinners. When he stands in the breach, he doesn't say, take that cross away. He says, nail it. Nail me to that cross. The story of Susanna ends thus was innocent blood spared that day. The story of my sin and yours ends thus was innocent blood shed for the guilty out of mercy and love. Because the Lord never stops loving us. And the Lord is so determined to free us from our sins, just as he not only prevented the woman caught in adultery from having to suffer because of her sin, from having to be condemned because of her sins. We still all suffer because of our sins. But not only does he prevent her from being condemned, but he wants to free her from that sin. Go and sin no more. Do not be bound by this sin anymore. So he wants to do for you and for me, brothers and sisters. So much so that he stands in the breach for us. The innocent stands in the breach for the guilty. To take the punishment for us. To take the condemnation for us. We are drawing very near to Good Friday, the day in which we will remember that innocent blood was not spared. Innocent blood was shed for you and for me. Let this move our hearts to deeper contrition, deeper love, and deeper hope, for the salvation of the God who has always loved us, always will and will never give up on us. As the time of Christ's suffering and death draws near, let us ask the Father to lead us through the dark moments of the Passover of his Son to the glory of his resurrection. For the Holy Church of God, that she may be defended from the snares of her enemies, through the Spirit of Christ who makes his home in her, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of this world, that they may be gathered into the Father's kingdom through the prayers and sacrifices of Christians in every nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, that they may pass peacefully and confidently through the gates of death to meet him who is the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn, that the Christ who wept for Lazarus, his friend, may console them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our sick, all who are suffering in any way, that they may know the consolation of Jesus Christ crucified and the hope of his resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the Lord may unbind them and let them go free in the kingdom of his glory, especially Benny Trowbridge, for whom this Mass is offered. And all of those near and dear to our own hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers of your church. Bring forth to resurrection the people who trust in your promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine, the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you, as the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We rule him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, sin no more.
prayer for spiritual communion. I believe that you, O Lord, are in the most holy sacrament. I love you and desire you. Come into my heart. I embrace you. O oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love, O oh Jesus, absorb my being and make me whole. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.